Well, this is the one you've been waiting for. After hundreds of hours and many, many late nights, we're finally going to be finishing the Monte Carlo back here, which is our 1970s NASCAR stock car build. I'm going to be taking you guys along. We could watch the vinyl wrap we put on this thing. We've got final assembly to do. And then, of course, just the right tires and wheels for this thing. Now, as you guys know, the bumpers on this are RMS Titanic and the Olympic up there. Is that the other one? Olympic? I'm not sure. There was others, is what I'm saying. They're huge, and they have weird shapes and stuff. And originally, the folks putting on the vinyl wrap just weren't quite sure that they were going to be able to wrap those and make them last. But they said, go ahead and loosely mount them, bring them on the car, and they're going to attempt to get that done, which... I'm hoping they can because it's really going to tie in the car. If not, worst case scenario, we'll clean them up with some steel wool and we'll have some shine, which I don't, you know, shine makes me nervous, but we want it to look like a newerish stock car getting ready for Daytona or whatnot. So we're going to go ahead and get those assembled. We're going to wipe it down, just try to get some of the filth and mud. I've actually been driving it the last few days. It's, <laughs> you know, how a guy gets to town and whatnot. We're going to load it on the trailer and then we're going to head for Nashville and I'm really excited to see this wrap put on. Never have seen the process in person but it's going to be mind-bottling to see them figure out all these different shapes and curvatures and geometry or is it trigonometry? I'm not sure. Algebra, that's it. Well the guy's got the Monte Barrow tucked into the trailer snugger than a bed rattlesnake. I'm going to show you the wheels here really quick, and then we're going to head into town. Now, I did a lot of research on this, and I know most of you fellers are thinking, well, it's going to be a D window or an 8 window or a circle window or something like that. Some of them even ran just custom stamped, like they looked like uh, spare tires or just basic steel wheels. But what I found through my research on the interwebs Google machine is a lot of the Chevy guys actually ran just a good old school rally. Now the difference here obviously is this thing is a behemoth. These are 15 by 11 and the rubber I've got chosen for this is going to make this package look really, really nice. Now, guy's not done. New, new siree. You know we got a I always take a gamble with my wheels as you guys know and we've been through every color, different pearls and whites and blacks and titaniums. But I got just the thing, just hang in there with me. You can bleep bloop your guests down there in the comments, but I think and hope you agree when you see the wrap on this car and we finally put the wheels on after I paint them, it's going to tie everything up together and put a little bow on her. But let me grab the tires for you. Yes. So here we are. These are legitimate old school Goodyear Eagles. Found these on the interwebs, got a good deal for them. Now, they're not traditional slicks. And, well, that's for the safeties. You put four slicks on that car, you go down the highway and hit any amount of moisture or loose dirt or gravel, well, you're in the ditch. Luckily, there's two miles of ditch for every one mile of highway, but we don't want to take that risk. So this vintage Eagle is going to work great. It's got some nice groove or a pattern in here, but, of course, the outside has that original-looking NASCAR stock car look. So after I get the wheels painted, Gonna get these puppies mounted on, but you're not gonna see that until the wrap's done and the car's back here. Well, let's head into town, get this vinyl wrap put on. Well, I got the car unloaded in the shop here. He's gonna show us some of these printers. So Whoa, these are huge. Three of these, they're all the same. We're printing a bus here right now. A bus? Yep. Yeah, yeah oh. that's mainly what we do. Buses and big yeah. things, huh? Four buses and trailers. Wow. A little bit bigger than my desktop Hewlett Packard. A little bit. Jeez. Once it comes off here, the laminate over here, this UV laminate, 
keeps oh, okay. the from fading and also helps it to scratch resistance. You know? Oh, I didn't realize it was several layers. So that's yeah. just the... That's the buck base layer. Okay. And then this layer goes on it. Kind of like clear coat. Heat. Exactly. Wow. And then we take it off this machine. They just put the roll on the table and they pull it out and trim the edges. Jeez. And then we start stretching it the car. Yeah. So these guys are going to do me a huge favor and keep us in the here and now as they do the project because it takes several days to do this with planning and printing and setting it up and everything like that. So really excited to see this done. Uh, it's going to be definitely one of a kind. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours later, the Monte Carlo is finally done. But before I show you guys this thing, and we'll take it for a spin, wanted to talk a little bit more about the project here. Over here, you can see the wrap going on or part of that process over there. And they did a tremendous job with all of the different shapes and body lines on this car. It's a, a pretty unbelievable process. Now, there were a lot of you fellers that said, hey, it's gotta have a big block and it's gotta have a four speed or some mentioned a six speed and boom tubes and QA1 suspension and lower it and different rear end and lots more roll cage. And all of that is really cool. And yes, that's what it would take to make a replica car. But there are a couple reasons I didn't. Like I mentioned before, I didn't want to lose the practicality of the vehicle. We got doors that open, it goes down the highway nice. A guy can scoot into the tavern with it or run errands. I wanted it to be functional and somewhat comfortable, but mostly with the exception of the independent Chevelle, everything on this channel has been budget minded. This one was a little bit more than typical, but I still feel like there's a large portion of you watching can pull something like this off. And I'm hoping that when you see this car, it fires some of you up and you get out of the recliner and you finally pull the trigger and get your project done. And and maybe it's even a street legal stock car. I don't know, but I think it is obtainable. And I hope with your help, we can keep a lot of this iron on the road. It is a lot of fun reviving vehicles, but I can't do it every week. That's 52 cars a year that are gonna sit in my property and unfortunately rot because I'm just one guy. So there's got to be an evolution and something has to happen with the vehicle that I saved. So here's one that I saved and by golly, we got her on the road and we're really going to enjoy this thing. We're going to try to take this to as many events as we can so you guys could check it out. First thing is this sick week. So if you're down in Florida, Bradenton, Gainesville, Valdosta, Georgia, I believe we're going to be at, swing on by, see the car, say hi, hang out, sit in the thing we can have some fun with it. There were a lot of good guesses on what livery I was gonna go with. Cole Trickle, the Wrangler car, the Intimidator car, Dale Jr., uh, Cole's car, all the way to Hawaiian Tropic and you name it. All really good guesses, amazing drivers. But you guys know me by now. I kinda like to blaze my own trail. And whilst I'm blazing that trail, I'm marching to my own drums. You know what I mean? So, I introduce to you the 1776 Vice Grip Garage NASCAR Stock Car.
Well, there you go, the 1776 Monte Carlo. I hope you're enjoying it so far, but I did want to spend a couple minutes and go over the artwork much closer, show you some of the detail and also explain what some of this artwork is in some of these businesses. Some of them probably have you scratching your head. So we'll start in the back here and kind of work our way forward. Of course, back here we've got the SEALs, Army, Navy, Marine, Air Force. I also have the Space Force and of course the Coast Guard. Just a way of saying thank you to those that are active, retired, and unfortunately missing and lost. I'll always try to have something like that on my cars if possible. Up here we've got West Side Tire and Auto. That company is no longer in business. That was actually my dad's business in the early 90s. It was a Sinclair gas station. He also did towing and vehicle repair and maintenance out of the shop there. And that was his company name. He's no longer with me either. I just thought it would be fun to put that up on his trunk. It's similar to what he had on his race car right there. We'll move over to uh, the quarter panels over here. Of course, we've got Shell. I run Rotella T4 or T6 and pretty much everything. Next to that, we've got Beery Farms, just paying some respect to my family. They've been farming and ranching since, geez, my great-great-grandfather, my grandfather, my dad, my uncles, my cousins, my brother, you name it. Uh, they've had their heels dug into the dirt, so to speak, for many, 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 many years. So I'm going to have them right along with us. Of course, we got Vice Grip Garage on the door here. That's pretty, you know, self-explanatory. 1776, it's got to be that number. But let's move up here to the fender. There's a lot going on. We've got another West Side logo here. It's kind of just a made up one. Down on the bottom there, of course, Black Velvet Whiskey. It's not an American whiskey, but I tell you what, it's made by my neighbors up north and it is my favorite. I'll tell you that right now. Down on the bottom there, my grandfather would have got a kick out of that. International Harvester. He ran a bunch of 1086s and other internationals on the farm, and I eventually became to love internationals as well. And uh, why would it be on a race car? It doesn't make sense. So there it is. You know what I mean? AC Dalco, 70s logo. Of course, we got Holly. Irwin Tools, their old logo. Of course, they ran the vice grip for many, many years. We got Pure Later. Nice filter. That's a 70s style. We got Peak and Freeze, of course. Ice Cube Juice, that's their 70s logo. Bobcat, my grandpa would have got a kick out of that one as well. So we had to put that one on there. Wrangler, Blaisdell Bar, that's kind of an inside story. That's a town I grew up in, actually. Blaisdell, North Dakota, the population, I don't know, 8, 12, maybe. But there's always been a bar there. It was probably one of the first buildings or establishments there besides the community building and the school. It's not actually called Blaisdell Bar. It's called Sneak Creek Saloon. In fact, my uncle at one point was part owner, but I suspect he probably drank up the profits. You know, I don't blame him. I'm just saying that's probably what happened. So we just had to put Blaisdell Bar. I have probably well over 100 years of family history in that area. Of course, we've got the old Winchester logo. And then up here on the front, just trying to stay with the 70s theme, Bell South. You remember that? Of course you do. That guy does. She, ooh, she does. Yep. Pan Am. Yep. Prominent in the 70s. Of course, they're defunct now, but we had to add them in there. And then, of course, the old school IBM logo up there as well. So that's pretty fun. The sides are a mirror image if you haven't figured that out. It's exactly the same from one to the other. The only difference is the vice grip garage because of how they lay out. And then of course up on the hood here, vice grip garage and the 1776. Now up here, guy thought about putting his name, you know, and then my wife's name over there, Jessica. But as with everything on this channel, we build things for us, meaning you watching, the people that subscribe and like and comment and that interact with us and enjoy the channel. 
we really believe that we put stuff together for all of us to enjoy, and that includes you folks. So we just put a feller and a fellette. Could be Jessica and I, could be my friends, could be you, could be you and your family, you name it. We just want to make it to where this car is ready for anybody to enjoy. And I truly mean that. So that's pretty much all of the artwork on the car here. It turned out fantastic. I'm glad we went with a gloss. We were going to do like a antiqued or a matte, try to make it look old. And I thought, you know what? Let's make this thing look like it just rolled off the semi, getting ready to run the Daytona for the first time. So we really put the shine on her. Now, normally I'm scared of shiny stuff, but man, sitting in this seat behind this wheel with that supercharger whining, honestly, I could care less about scratching it. It is just so much fun to drive. It handles great. It gets up and goes. Well, there you have it. The 1776 Monte Barro now relives as a 70s NASCAR stock car. Thank you guys for being patient through the build. We put so much time and effort into this in just a couple weeks. Special thank you to my brother Sean, my friend Chad, Prime, who put together the artwork for me right out of my brain into the digitals, and then of course Rap Artists in Nashville that actually applied it on the car for us as well. If you guys want to see this progress over time, let me know what's next. Maybe we do start slowly stepping this up a little bit at a time. Let's try to keep the cost down, you know what I mean? Throw out some ideas. Also, if you have any events you'd like to see this car at that are really cool that this thing would fit in or the kids would have fun with it and enjoy it, or maybe it's an event in your neck of the woods and you want to see the thing, bleep bloop that down there in the comments and let's see if we can make it happen. Thanks guys for watching. Appreciate it very much. We'll see you next time. I'm going to go for another spin. This thing's fun.